Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name's William Davis. I'm the Director of Education for Wilson Daniels. And uh, thanks for uh, joining us as we are about to go live with uh, Gerard Blanc, who is the winemaker of Masle Chevalier in the uh, Languedoc-Roussillon, specifically in the uh, village of uh, Béziers. Um, so uh, let's get him on. Um, perfect timing. Hope everyone's having a great day out there. I know that the connection uh, with him in the south of France is good. We uh, checked that out on Monday and uh, everyone's coming through. So there we are, Gerard. How are you, my friend? Hey, I'm very well, thanks. And you, how are you doing? Uh, very good. Yeah, so um, tell us a little bit about where you are. I, I think that you're right by the winery, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm very pleased to, to welcome you virtually. <laughs> Uh, in south of France, uh, in uh, in our estate, um, Masla Chevalier in Languedoc. So I'm just in front of the, the winery uh, of Masla Chevalier La, La Roche in uh, in south of France. Um, just a little bit of history, maybe um, sure. of the estate. Estate, yeah. We the story of of the estate started um, in uh, in the 80s, 80s and late 80s, 90s when uh, La Roche decided to settle down uh, in south of France to produce, uh, first of all, the Chardonnay. Uh, Chardonnay, because, of course, um, the link with Burgundy was, was there. Um, so with variety like Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, but also with, uh, of course, um, Rosé, uh, which is uh, uh, becoming uh, more and more a, a success. Okay? So, first of all, with, with variety, but also with vineyards that we own, with uh, vineyards that we own in specific places, altitude places, cooler places, uh, where we produce Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and, and Rosé again. So that is. Yeah, I, put a, I actually put an image of the uh, vineyard sources. So hopefully everyone can see that. Even uh, you know, feel free to uh, move yes. my uh, wonderful head um, yeah. you know, around. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Um, so, you know, um, you know, what we're, what we're doing here is, you know, there's a range of different, um, you know, uh, uh, elevations, uh, you know, when we always yes. talk about the, uh, the Languedoc Roussillon, um, you know, or the, or the, or the Duc, you know, uh, I think that there's a misconception of, you know, the, uh, the, the varying, uh, soil types and climates within what yeah. you find in the South of France. It's not all just driven by Mediterranean. I mean, you know, there are certain places uh, and certain yes. places that you work with that actually get snow certain times of the year. Is that correct? Yeah, for sure. For sure, yes. Yeah, it's good. Your map is very interesting because uh, you can see that Languedoc-Roussillon is, is, a, is a big area, but very diverse. It's uh, like an amphitheater around the, around the Mediterranean Sea. So just a bit in, in the middle between uh, uh, could be Spain and uh, uh, Italy, of course, you have, you have Provence. Uh, you have Provence on the on the on the eastern part, but and Rhone Valley. But it's like an amphitheater um, uh, facing facing the, the sea with a big diversity of 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 terroir, uh, expositions, soils, uh, so, um, and and so th that is the, the the richness of of this region. And that is true that uh, we have higher altitude vineyards, uh, 300 meter high, 400 meter high. And during winter, of course, you can have uh, uh, snow there. So it, it means that it's not only a flat and, uh, and warm uh, area, it's a diverse, um, complex, um, complex by the diversity of, of the soils, of the terroir, of the varieties that are, that are planted also, because you have uh, so many varieties that can be planted there because uh, you can adapt your variety. For instance, the Chardonnay, uh, likes altitude vineyards, cooler places, like for the Pinot Noir, true, too. And for our style of wine, it's the perfect places because these varieties keep the acidity, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and the level, of, the balance between sugar and acidity is perfect thanks to this. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, we always associated the, the dock with the uh, either Bordeaux varieties or Rhone varieties, you know, the Grenaches, the Syrahs or, you know, for warmer areas in the uh, Languedoc for Cabernet and for Merlot and for grape varieties that need a little bit more heat compared to some more of the Burgundian varieties and varieties that you're going to find uh, further north in France and around the world. You know, it's, it's fascinating to me, you know, looking at uh, Limoux, 
for example, and you know yeah. you've got a uh, source for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir there, and then also yes. you know with that being part of the um, the Pyrenees, and then you've got uh, similar soil types but coming from the Massif Central, and yes. what you have in the Cévennes, you know it's 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 fascinating to see you know how you can be you know three hundred um, kilometers away from from, yeah, one, sure. from one vineyard to the next, but yet you can have um, you know, these distinct similarities with, uh, you know, different ways that the soils have been built up, whether or not it's the massif or whether or not, you know, it's the mixture of the, you know, Eurasian and the uh, Iberian peninsulas meeting up yeah. for, the, uh, for, the, for the Pyrenees Mountains. So let's talk so, a little bit about the, um, uh, about the, uh, the rosé. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, those uh, we're, so, we're dealing with we were talking Syrah, correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we were talking about the red variety, of course, for, for Syrah and Grenache that are very famous in, in Languedoc. Um, our rosé is made with Grenache, Syrah and Senso, um, harvested again on interesting places where we can find a good uh, balance between acidity and sugar. So, of course, for the rosé, we, we have to be precise on the date of harvest, not to be an over uh, maturity. So to keep, again, uh, a, a pale, uh, um, a very a clean color, so it's harvested um, at the end of August. Okay, so just to 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 keep this this, this style, um, we do have uh, Syrah and Grenache on uh, in our property. So we do have these grapes coming from uh, places like uh, Coteau, uh, where we manage our uh, rosé uh, of Syrah, Grenache, and uh, and Senso. Uh, and again, just to to come back a little bit word on, on, on the terroir uh, that we, we have and that we select, uh, the limestone. The limestone uh, is always uh, a, 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 um, um, a line and uh, something that we, we are looking for. Um, so, and, and Languedoc, as, as we have chance because we have, we have these kinds of soils with clay, of course, but limestone soil. So Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and of course our rosé that we manage. Uh, okay, it's, it's a rosé, but it's a direct press rosé. So maybe we will uh, go in the winery. I will uh, explain you a little bit more on the process, if you want. <laughs> Please. You know, you have some, you've got some vineyards just to the, uh, uh, the south of you, correct? You know, as you turn Yeah, around, yeah, we, we. I believe that's yes. the, um, the, the Grenache and some Over there. that you have located there. Y yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, so we, we have around. Um, and uh, uh, Chardonnay are, are, are higher in altitude. Okay, in cooler places, but it's true that Grenache and Syrah can be planted closer to the closer to the sea. Yeah? Okay? okay, so yeah, follow me. <laughs> it's of like uh, yeah, a very <laughs> you know, uh, very few of us, uh, at least in the uh, company, have had a chance oh. to make it to the winery um, yeah. or actually be inside the uh, the, the fermentation vat area. Uh, and you know, so I'm really excited to see what's going on here. It looks like the weather did us okay so. Today. So, yeah. this, guys, there might be a little bit of buffering as we go up the stairs here, uh, but it should clear back up as uh, as your road makes it to the uh, top level. Is it okay? Yep, we are good. Yeah, there's a little bit of buffering coming up the stairs, but you're uh, you're just fine. So it's okay you for you. you okay. So yeah, so Maslow Chevalier, I've told uh, about history, of course, of 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 the estate, of the vineyards, but. Masla Chevalier is also this, this winery. This winery is the perfect tool, the perfect place to produce the wine that we want to produce. Okay, so in Languedoc, we are very uh, lucky. We have uh, uh, this kind of winery that had been made to allow the gravity, you know, um, the gravity to protect the quality of the grapes, not to use pumps uh, and to, to transform the grapes that we harvest in the best best way okay um, so for instance I can show you we have like here like uh, an elevator so we can bring all the um, all the grapes on the on the top here and we can walk very easily um, by gravity so is it okay do you hear me of course, you see yeah, me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we can use for instance this kind of uh, a thing to fill our press on the first floor we have the press here so we can fill the press by gravity. So it's used for our whites, our Chardonnay, our Rosé. 
So again, no pump, vertical system, and again we we protect when we we keep uh, again the fruit the fruit like is it in in the vineyard. We bring it in the winery. Okay? I see. And after that, uh, the point is this winery is very easy to work. Has been thought to be very logical. So vertical system, gravity process, um, small tanks, bigger tanks for, for blends, not huge, but bigger. So we can do plot selection. So it's very interesting for this. Again, all the tanks we don't see, we see only the cap, we see only, only the, the top of the tank, but all the tanks are under a uh, um, cold system, okay? Uh, cold belt, okay? okay, so very important, of course, for rosé, for whites, for, for reds too, uh, for Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir, we do like a cold maceration at the beginning of the winemaking process during five days, so it's very important to have cold. Again, I don't prove that we need cold for rosé and a white because we need to keep the freshness of the fruit. We don't want any oxidation. What we want is to protect, again, our Grenache, our Syrah, of course, the Chardonnay, during the harvesting, during the reception of, of, the, of the grapes, and during the pressing. The press that we use is um, a press called Inertis that is pressing without any oxygen. So thanks to this, we can protect the, the level of, of the juice and the color also. That's why we, we can find this, this very clean, pale, Pink color on the on the on the on the, on the rosé. Um, it's a, it, it's the same thing also for our uh, varietal wines like uh, our Chardonnay, our Sauvignon Blanc. We want to protect them a lot. Yeah, I actually, and again, have, uh, some of the uh, Chardonnay in glass, and I you know I like the, uh, the 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 idea and concept of you know how you're trying to protect you know either from temperature or or from oxidation because you're also uh, night harvesting for all of the fruit. Uh, that you yep. get for your Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Are yes, you also night harvesting. For Grenache as well. Yeah, for sure. For in fact, we are um, we are um, in South of France, so it's August and September I, I, I are warm. Nights are cold, colder, so it's very interesting to harvest at the beginning uh, of the day, so four, five in the morning. So we have to organize ourselves to start harvest, harvesting in the middle of the night. Okay, to 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 have a reception here at four or five in, in, the, in the morning. And all the work of harvesting is done by night. So, and again, in, in, the, obje in the objective to protect from oxidation and to keep the fruit like it is. We, we, we have um, the opportunity here to, thanks to the tanks, to do a, 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 a big work of selection. So we, we don't want to, 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 to do the things very fast. We, we take our time. Of course, we have to be very, quick during uh, the decision because the date of harvest is, uh, is the most important decision that we have to take. Again, if you lose, uh, if you wait sometimes two days too, too long, uh, you lose the balance. So again, the date of harvest, so control that we do in our vineyard, in the vineyard that we have in contracts, we have more than 200 hectares in contracts uh, that, we we, that we follow all, all year long. And especially during uh, harvest, because uh, we do some testings of grapes, of of um, we do some analysis of, of the grapes. So it's very it's it's a very big part of the job. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, I was going to say, Jerome, could you lower your uh, your your phone so everyone can yep. see the uh, fermentation vats behind you? I mean, this gives you an idea yep. of just how many uh, micro lots that uh, Giraud and the team at Maslo Chevalier uh, can work with. I mean, for, for wines that are less than, um, you know, $10 wholesale, it's pretty incredible to see, you know, the amount of work that goes into uh, making these wines. Mm -hmm. So here we, here we have our um, sorting table for, for the reds. So again, by gravity, we can fill the, the tanks by gravity. So again, everything has been built to, to, uh, to, to be very easy, very clean. Um, so it's uh, always, a, um, it's always a comparison that we do with the work of, of a chef in, in a restaurant. He, he has a very modern winery, uh, 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 kitchen, sorry. 
uh, but you do the work in a traditional way, okay? So we have a very modern way to we, but the work we do is very traditional. That is gravity process, no additions, um, only taking care of, of the juice. And once you have the quality in the juice, in the grapes, after it's only taking care, but it's a big work. But <laughs> it's, it's not, it's a day-to-day -day work, of course, of winemaking. But again, winemaking is a part, aging is a part, and bottling again is a part. And we have the chance, we won't have the time to go there, but we have our bottling line in the, in the estate. So we have the autonomy on this and we can control what all the stages of, 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 of the winemaking, aging and bottling. Oh, well, great. So it's a, no, it's, it's a very interesting place. And, uh, you know, thanks to everyone for joining. Um, if you do happen to have a question for uh, Giraud or, uh, you know, about the winery or about the region, feel free to put that in the comment section. Um, so, Giraud, you know, let's, you know, as, as beautiful as the winery is, uh, I think that the rosé label is a really cool label. So, for sure. where was the thought process behind the uh, label? It's, it's very festive, very bright. Um, you know, you know yes. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, when, you, when you see, uh, after we will go in, in the mass, we have uh, the mass there, the mass La Chevalier. I don't know if you see it. So we, I think we'll have uh, the tasting there, but I can, I can talk about maybe the, um, okay. the label during, during, uh, during I work because it's buffer, it's, uh, the sound is not very good here. And I think if it's okay for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, there's, a little, there's always that little bit of buffering as you come down the stairs, but we are, uh, we're good to go. Yeah. It's okay here? Yep, yep, we are great. So I will stop maybe again or there. Just here, yeah, the label is, uh, was designed to, to show um, the, the fact that this wine is a pleasant wine. It's a colorful, uh, colorful uh, rosé, you know, is, is, uh, is made to be shared. Uh, it's a pleasure wine. And I think, uh, I'm sure, <laughs> this label is a, is a perfect uh, image of, uh, and, and a representation of, of the wine inside. Um, again, you can see the La Roche logo, uh, that is the historical uh, logo of, uh, of La Roche, the eyes, the nose and the mouth that are like exploding because this one, we want it to be, um, again, uh, uh, again, um, uh, uh, like, um, uh, pleasure, elegant, uh, we want to share it with others and, uh, it's, I think Rosé is made for this for sharing moments. And uh, this wine, uh, this label, I think it has been now three, three vintage. And uh, every time we open a bottle and we share it with, uh, with uh, <laughs> some visitors, some friends, uh, we have always uh, this good, uh, the good, this, this good uh, um, remark on it. Mm. Okay. It is, <laughs> no, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a fun filled label. Um, you know, that's what I enjoy about it, because really, that's what the and, wine is all about, you know, especially for rosé. Uh, you, know, you know, having a glass here, it really shows a lot of those bright peach notes, um, you know, along with you know, a little bit of a citrus note. It's a very fun wine with a fun label. Yeah. Yes, we, we've made it. Uh, we, we did the final blend. Uh, of course, we do... Uh, um, we do some bases, Grenache uh, separate, Syrah, Syrah and Senso. Uh, the Grenache, uh, of course, had, had, is a very round, very uh, um, rich uh, red berries, uh, strawberry juice. The Syrah had, had like a vinic style to the wine. It's very interesting to, 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 to add the complexity. And the senso adds the floral. So this, this one works like a, a puzzle. And all the varieties are, um, are, um, are very complementary. And uh, always keep in mind that um, we, we want it to be also on the image and on the style of the, the wine that we produce here in Mas La Chevalier. So elegant, um, fresh, with freshness, um, complexity. Uh, and uh, something very easy to drink, like a like like a, a, um, a summer fruit uh, 
um, how do you say? Yeah, um, it is. It's, uh, it is. It's, it's, it's summer berry. It's a berry fruit summer. salad. Uh, and mm. I really like, you know, you're right, those red floral nuts from the Cinso, you know, bring uh, mm. something else to the wine. Let's, let's and, al and always we, we work on, on, on the good acidity, like uh, um, on, 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 the, on the plate, you always lo look for good, good acidity, good bit bitterness, good saltiness. And this wine, I think, is a, is a good uh, image of, of, of this also. So uh, you're so, walk, you were just walking through the vineyards and then through the gate, which I think that there's the gate that I yep. believe that you just walked through uh, the yep. image there. Uh, and so yep. the uh, vineyards behind, and then of course the uh, the moss directly ahead. So as we yes. walk through the rows here, or uh, walk down this aisle, tell us a little bit about the um, uh, uh, the, the the viticultural uh, decisions that were made. Yes. You know, So uh, Masle Chevalier is uh, is, is is uh, growing his vineyard. We are growing our vineyard in an organic way. Um, so we are in the third year of conversion. So next next vintage will be organic. Uh, so that is we we do a big work on uh, on, um, on 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 the soil. Of course, uh, we use only uh, natural uh, products to taking care of the of the grapes. But it's more than that. It's it's taking care of all the environment around. So we are HVE three. That is a big also. Uh, it, it's a um, um, uh, certification that is including uh, water resource. Uh, that is including also um, uh, how we manage uh, the, the soil. So if we have grass inside uh, on the roof, uh, if we are taking care of the the trees around. So it's. Um, it's a big part too of the of the of the of the work. No, it's, so no, I, I yeah. love that holistic approach. You know, again, I've I've said this before, but there are plenty of wineries that uh, you know might look at being organic in the vineyards, or even you know not using herbicides, pesticides, fungicides in the winery. Mm. Uh, but that holistic approach in you know how you know every step of the process uh, is as kind for the earth as it can be. Yes, and um, of course, organic uh, is not doing nothing. It's being very precise, doing more more work than uh, in other uh, other way. Especially in a in a vintage that is uh, sometimes raining, uh, so we have to be careful of of the wall. Uh, of course, um, um, the wall uh, balance of the vineyard. So, of course, resource soil. Um, The balance of of the of also of the of the of the, of the leaves of the of the vigor of the vineyards to to be in uh, in 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 um, the more the most possible natural way that we can. I see. So uh, okay. I believe that you know you've uh, got some flowering going on in the uh, in the vineyard. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Um, uh, We, yes, uh, the, the, um, we are right in, in the middle of, of the flowering. So maybe I will uh, show you. I have, uh, um, I'm going to show you. I don't know if you see it. Do you see it? Yes. So here the, the flowering is uh, uh, right in, in the middle. We can see uh, the bunch. With all the future berries here, so flowering is almost done. So it is very quick. <laughs> quick. It's only maybe uh, four or five days, um, and this year it is flowering quite early because we had a, a winter that that was uh, quite warm. So it's quite early for 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 the flowering. But after um, you know after the flowering, we have uh, we have to wait. So maybe uh, it can change. But it means that we will starting uh, harvesting in the middle of August, okay? Wow! For the first, yeah, middle end of August. For of course, not for for all the varieties. For the first varieties, so okay. So we have to be ready there, and uh, of course, we will uh, continue in the middle of September on uh, our uh, our Chardonnay uh, coming from cooler places, mm -hmm. our Pinot Noir. Uh, so we have a big diversity, as we were saying. So 
it's starting uh, yes mid uh, mid uh, mid August end August and it's uh, finishing uh, uh, late September for Cabernet. Uh, that is uh, our le last uh, variety to be harvested. I see. So you've, I mean, there was a little bit of rain that you've had, but, you know, not so much that you've been worrying about flowering. So it looks like... The no, 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 it's okay. It's it's okay uh, because we we had uh, rain just before, uh, but while it was flowering, uh, we had um, no, um, good climate, three, four days of, of good climate, so it's perfect. And again, uh, all, the, all the varieties are not flowering yet. Syrah and um, Grenache, it depends, of, 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 of course, of, of the altitude. It depends of uh, the terroir. Um, but again, it's, uh, it's, uh, it will be in, uh, in a few weeks. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, you know, funny talking about that because we talked about the overall regions, but we never really uh, discussed the two crew uh, that you have at Massa Chevalier, specifically the uh, uh, the Roca Blanca as well as the Peyroli. So tell us a little bit about what's planted on those two vineyards uh, and where they're located. So yes, we we have two very beautiful vineyards, unique. Uh, we have a vineyard of Chardonnay called called Peyroli uh, at 400 meter high altitude in the north of uh, Languedoc. So remember your map. Uh, it's on the north, uh, just facing uh, Central Massif. So you have Massif Central Massif, uh, which are the mo mountains of France in the middle. So it's right in the middle of the map, on the limit, north limit uh, of the map, in the, in the mountains, very unique place in the middle of the forest with limestone. So I think you had a picture of, of it and you showed it just uh, uh, at the beginning of the, maybe it was when I was in, uh, in the winery. Ah, yes. Um, here? It's ver yes, here is the pictures of the vineyard with the, the, the part that is, uh, that has uh, the biggest slope, 40% of, of slope, so we can't put a machine on, 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 on in this vineyard. Very rocky, limestone, so you, very adapted for Chardonnay and for the style of Chardonnay that we want to produce. And this vineyard is harvested maybe one month after all the Chardonnay, the average Chardonnay that uh, people are grow growing in uh, in Languedoc. So it means that is um, it's it's a unique a, a unique place too. No, it and, is, uh, and you know, I, I dedicated and dedicated dedicated for, for for Chardonnay. And what about the Roca Blanca? And the Roca Blanca is a different kind of soil, a little bit more clay, uh, a little bit. Um, we are around 300 meters high, so a little bit lower in altitude. It's, yes, the area of the soil, a little red with clay, so very interesting to keep, uh, to keep um, the humidity in the soil during the summer. So for the balance of, of the grapes, it's very interesting. You can see that we have also um, limestone, so like a very good balance of these two components of the soil that give very unique vine, wines of, of Syrah, of Pinot Noir, and uh, we produce also rosé on, 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 on this terroir. So it's in fact our red, uh, red vineyard, uh, giving our part of our red uh, range variety and manage like, like uh, the, all the vineyards that we are looking at and that we own, like gardens. That is, you can see the picture. Uh, we manage it like uh, little gardens we have a unique winery, we have uh, very small tanks, and these vineyards are the first step, okay? So we have vineyards like garden, one, two hectare plots, and we harvest, we bring the, the, the grapes in the, in the winery, in the small vats, tanks, and it's very logical, very log logical. All, all the... Um, the estate of Master Chevalier is, is, is very logical. Everything starts from, from the vineyard and is transformed in our unique and, and uh, very modern uh, winery in a traditional way. That could be a good sum up on, on, for, for, the, <laughs> for the winery and, and, and the estate Master Chevalier. No, I, I think it's, you know, uh, for, for those that haven't, you know, spent any time either in Minervois or Corbière um, or, or in Bézier, uh, the hiking, uh, especially as you get up into the Massif Central, a lot of people don't realize that there is a limestone plateau 
where you have these very deep canyons and, uh, you know, a mountain range, if it would, but inside the mountain range, you know, you've got this granitic, uh, you know, this massif, and then all of a sudden yep. you see these, you know, extremely bright white mountains almost uh, that you yes. can hike through. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. You have, you have some places like uh, Karouk Mountain that is just very close from the place that we grow Chardonnay, our, um, our Chardonnay in altitude. You have also places called uh, uh, Pic Saint-Loup, that are big limestone mountains. You have also Chistu soil. So Chistu soils that are in the middle, you know, so it's very diverse. And, uh, but again, per perfect places to, to grow typical Mediterranean uh, wines, uh, typical from their, their terroir, their soil, and um, so it's you have you have to come and and, and visit us. <laughs> um, I certainly <laughs> shall. You know, um, nothing <laughs> tells me that the uh, the airfares are going to be affordable for the foreseeable future when we do open things up. And uh, I know that we all want to get out and spend some time in the sunshine. But, uh, you know, Gerard. You know, we talk about yeah. soil types for the grapes. Um, Let's you see me, it's okay. The, uh, the foods. Yeah, let's see if we can turn you uh, around. Okay. There you go. Um, okay, let's sorry. See if we, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the foods and some of the cuisine uh, that you have, uh, specifically Bézier and the Languedoc, because uh, it does change slightly from what you might find, you know, in, in, in Avignon. But, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about that and, you know, some of the pairings that you might have for some of the, uh, the wines on the... Uh, uh, in the portfolio, yes, uh, of course. Our our if we start with our white wine um, Chardonnay, um, of course, our our style of white wine or Chardonnay here, it, the perfect ma match, of course, is si si seafood oysters that we can find. Of course, I'm gonna try to put the phone here. Uh, Sorry. There Is it we okay? Go. Perfect. <laughs> yep. Sorry. No, you're quite alright. <laughs> yes, yes. The, maybe I will taste with you. <laughs> of course. It's it's um, happy where you are after all. So. <laughs> yes. It's seven, I think. So yeah, um, I was talking of the um, of the style of our Chardonnay that is pure. Um, we vinificate it, it in a varietal style. In Languedoc, you can find uh, Chardonnay that are um, high, that have high level of alcohol, uh, so lack of acidity. Here, what we want to produce, thanks to our terroir, thanks to the altitude, we want to produce a varietal style. So that is white flowers, white peaches. Uh, citrus notes on on, uh, on the nose. And of course, um, good salinity, good acidity. So the, the, um, we are talking about food pairing for this wine. Of course, in Languedoc, we are close to the sea. We have uh, some, some ve um, very good fishes. Um, oyster that are produ produced around, along the Mediterranean coast. Um, but also, of course, we have influence from, from Spain with, um, with, uh, of course, spicy salads and, and things like that. So, of course, France is very diverse in terms of, uh, of, um, of, um, um, kitchen. Mm. But Mediterranean kitchen, um, of course, all along the, the, the coast, um, is is uh, is is it can be mixed and 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 it can be paired on of, with, with this wine. No, I see that it you know it's it's delicious just by itself. It's a great you know what I I refer to as a cocktail wine. You know you don't necessarily need anything with it because you know it the the, the fruit for this Chardonnay is more vibrant. You know you'd expect that mm -hmm. uh, compared to what you might find in Chablis or you know uh, in in parts yeah. of Burgundy. Um, so it's very delicious by itself. It doesn't require food, but you know, uh, you yeah. know something with a little bit of spice. Um, yeah, you know, and sure. I, you know, I like I like the idea of you know uh, some of that uh, Iberian you know uh, 
influence that you'll get with the uh, coastal influence. Like you could, you could have paella with this just as easy as you could have yeah. something from, from the Languedoc. For sure. And, um, but also with um, more classical uh, dishes uh, around, or, 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 around um, uh, um, of course, grilled salmon, uh, uh, cooked fishes. Um, you know, our wine is a big success all over all over the world. It's a chance for us. So that means it can be uh, paired with um, o uh, other kind of uh, um, um, history and uh, other kind of food and uh, all over the world. So it's it means that this wine is. Uh, uh, I mean that this wine has a is a good link and uh, is a good. Um, um, how do you say, um, image and a good uh, um, of of La Roche and Massa So mm. because you can is all over the world and uh, uh, it can it can be paired with uh, so many so many dishes and so many plates. So it means we are very proud of this. So just to come back to come back on on the wine and you were talking about salinity. You were talking about um, the structure of the wine. We, we do a big work on 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 the pressing uh, stage um, of selection. We keep only the first press on this wine. We we the first press and the last presses are are are, take, are, are not blended in the final blend to keep um, a wine that is um, elegant, no bad bitterness, uh, only um, only the good acidity, the good saltiness, the good complexity. You want to drink another glass after another glass. It's it's what we want, in fact, <laughs> on this wine. It's only uh, stainless steel tank wine, no oak on this on this wine. Um, so only pure Chardonnay um, coming from a selection of the best plots and a, a blend that we make uh, close during uh, it could be January. Um, and um, and each vintage are, uh, is is uh, is moving uh, uh, year after year. Uh, we 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 want it to be um, um, uh, easy to drink uh, on the on the um, on its young young uh, years vintage. I see. Yeah, and you know I like that philosophy. You know, uh, many ways tying in the north and the south as a bridge uh, between mm. what happens at the Main La Roche and what happens yes. in, at Mass. Uh, but I like the idea of, you know, just the, uh, the purity uh, and the transparency of the grape variety. Yep. You know, uh, and, uh, trying, we, you know, much like in Chablis, that you're not dealing with a lot of new oak uh, and you're dealing primarily with stainless steel. Um, you see a similar philosophy here with the, uh, with the Moss wines. Yeah, and uh, we, of course, <laughs> the, we are, brand, the La Roche uh, is on the label, so... When we want the customer uh, recognize the, the wine, we want to we want him uh, not to be um, lost. We want it to be um, okay. We, I have a La Roche wine coming from, uh, of course, south of France, but in the link and uh, and uh, we, with a real um, Burgundian style in south of France. Well, it's a, it's it's a delicious uh, wine. So mm. uh, Pinot Noir. You know, so we've got the uh, the Roca Blanca up. Um, walk us through uh, the, uh, the 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 winemaking as well as you know what you taste in the uh, Pinot Noir. So our our Pinot Noir um, again the same is harvested on in the same terroir as the Chardonnay, so cooler places. Uh, we do a cool a uh, cold maceration during five or six days be, before a winemaking process um, at a very low temperature, before, before the winemaking, to enhance the fruit, to enhance the color. It's not to have a, a, a dark, uh, strong uh, Pinot Noir. It's just to, to, to en enhance the, 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 the complexity too, uh, the red little berries on, on, on the nose, on, on the mouth, the red cherries. So we do it during four, five, six days. And after that, we do the winemaking process uh, that will last 10, 10 days. We don't do a big maceration. Uh, we don't do a long maceration. Like it could be on a Syrah, on a Grenache, that could be one month or, or more than one month. For Pinot Noir, it's only 
10, 10, 12 days of maturation because it's very fragile, very sensitive uh, variety. Uh, skins are, are, um, um, are very fragile, so we don't want to have a, um, a, a big extraction on it. We just want to, to have the fruit, like is it, like a Pinot Noir is, uh, that is small little berries of um, cherry, um, red uh, uh, strawberry juice, uh, we want it like that, okay? After that, uh, uh, we do, uh, of course, uh, we, we, we rack uh, the tank, we press, we have the, 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 the pressed wine, and we will do the final blend of, of our Pinot Noir. So we want to be typical from, a, you expect from a Pinot Noir, um, with spicy notes, with red berries, uh, not especially with a strong color that we uh, we want it like it could be in Burgundy, in fact. Because again, our link is is La Roche. La Roche history started in Chablis, so in Burgundy. So we we have to be we have to be on on this line. Yeah, it's you know it's it's funny because again we we all understand that we're in the Languedoc, we're in the south of France. I tend to get a little bit more of a darker fruit. Uh, you know, in those complexities, as opposed to what you might find in the Cote de Bona, the Cote de Nuit. But the acidity is what brings everything back into uh, focus. And there's some nice structure about the wine. Now, with, there is a little bit of the uh, Pinot Noir for, the, uh, for, the, for the, the base Pinot Noir for Master Chevalier coming from the Roca Blanca vineyard, correct? Yeah, uh, uh, we have, we have uh, two parcels of Pinot Noir there. Um, so, um, giving a, a good maturity Pinot Noir um, with uh, help a lot with, uh, of course, um, the clay um, and, uh, and, and the limestone coming from this coteau. But another part is coming from cooler places like um, Seven, like Limou, which is very famous for its Pinot Noir uh, in steel wine, eh, like uh, for the Chardonnay. So again, we manage it like, uh, um, of course, uh, it's a red, it's, 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 it's a red wine, but to, in terms of sourcing, we manage it in the same way as our Chardonnay and, uh, and, and our, uh, our Rosé. Always looking for good acidity on, on, on the grapes. We, we don't want to wait and we can't wait too long for a Pinot Noir. Because if we wait, you like, you, you, you like, you 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 will lose the the juice in the juiciness of of the fruit. So again, I was talking of the date of harvest on uh, on our uh, decisions that we have to take. This kind of decision is on it is, is, is of course on all the varieties. It's very important. But Pinot Noir is very fragile, very so it can in one day you can sometimes lose everything. So lose the fruit, lose the, uh, the balance. And so, again, to produce this precise Pinot Noir, we have to be precise in the vineyard. I see. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is one of those wines that, you know, yes, even though it's got that darker fruit, it's still fresh fruit. It's not a desiccated or an overripe fruit set. Uh, mm. And I think that there's a capacity for that wine to age. So, in your opinion, uh, how 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 long do you think you could uh, hold on to that Pinot Noir? Um, this Pinot Noir, especially in this kind of of uh, of, um, of bottle uh, with this kind of closure, we have also we have it on Magnum, uh, uh, and with the acidity and the balance uh, we we have, we are we are very surprised. Uh, sometimes we open some four, five, even six year vintages. Of course, our range is the, the, I was talking about the objective is to have pleasant wine that have to be drink, drank uh, on the, the, the vintage that is coming. But we, you can keep uh, them because the acidity of the wine helps it to age. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because again, uh, it's always um, um, thanks to acidity. And it, it, that's why all the Burgundian wines are, are, have a very good aging potential. Uh, acidity, pH, and the balance between alcohol is perfect. So our Pinot Noir, as we as we may, may make it, it's not especially uh, our objective to to keep it uh, during uh, five years. But is, is, there is no problem to to drink it after after four or five years. 
Yeah, I, I think that's important to say that uh, for many wines in this category and this general price point, uh, they're almost treated like inexpensive rosé that, you know, if it's uh, two or three years old, then it's not going to hold up. And, you know, I would invite everyone if they've got, you know, a, a bottle of Masse Le Chevalier with a little bit of age, because all of the wines are stainless steel, none of them see oak, with the exception, I think, of the uh, Peyroli and the uh, Roca Blanca. Yes, um, true. Uh, so, you know, definitely uh, take a look at those and you might be pleasantly surprised. Uh, so there is a question that came through uh, from Monica. Hey, Monica. Um, so does a cold soak have anything to do with a short maceration in your, in your eyes? Um, does a cold soak have anything to do with a short maceration? Uh, in fact, we do, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's during the maceration phases, we, we put the, the, the grapes in the tank and uh, during, during this, during four days, we do this cold soak. So it's four days of cold soak and after we do, uh, we do the maceration. That is short when you compare it to a Syrah could, that could be three, four weeks because with the cold soak, we have 12 days of maturation, so it could be 16 days of maturation. So we, I don't, I don't know if, if, if the question is in this way, but, uh, and if I answer your question, but. Yeah, um, I think so. I think that, you know, um, you know, many, many that, you know, opt in doing a, a load, a, a longer cold soak might shorten their maceration time. Um, yeah, if we, it's true, but we we don't want to to do a long cold soak. We want to to do it only only four days, only four days. And that's and that's not only for the Pinot Noir. That's all. That's for all grape varieties. Yeah, we specially do it for Pinot Noir. Uh, we can do it also for a Syrah, but we do special. We do most of the time. We do it on on our Pinot Noir. Okay. On our Pinot Noir, most of the time. Well, you know, we uh, and we you brought up briefly the um the use of uh screw cap you know uh mm -hmm. so you know with the uh, stelvin enclosures how long has mus been utilizing stelvin and what was the um, reason for that um i think uh yeah la roche was one of uh, the pioneer to start uh, screw cap a lot and uh, on all the range on uh, on mass la chevalier wines i think it was at at the beginning of uh, the close to the beginning of the creation of uh, of um, of la, la chevalier in south and um, what we wanted was to i was talking of the fruit of uh, the way we manage the winemaking to keep the fruit as it is in uh, in the in the winery transform it and from the vineyard to the bottle and this me this way of closure helps a lot to keep the purity of the wine uh, of course it's not it's not hermetic at 100 percent it has like a, um, like um, porosity mm -hmm. so it, it's not uh, it's not a, an hermetic totally hermetic closure so for this type of wine I accept of course uh, our estate wine uh, the decision I think was the right decision to 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 keep uh, our the purity of our our varietal wines and uh, to offer the customer uh, a regularity because what we want is uh, is not to be we want our customer when he buys this kind of bottle uh, uh, this rosé for instance mm -hmm. we don't want him to be uh, disappointed by uh, by a cork uh, a bad cork experience so and i think it and he can accept and uh, he accepts this kind of closure uh, that is also a, a, a good way to share uh, with friends. Uh, you can you can close the bottle after using, drinking it. So it's, I think, for our ranch and uh, and also dedicated for export market. Mm -hmm. It's 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 the right type of closure. So yeah, La Roche was a pioneer pioneer, especially in France, because. Uh, French uh, wineries, um, you know, French customers are, are, are also um, are, um, also yeah, looking they, for they cork. Yeah, have an opinion on yeah. cork versus mm -hmm. screw cap as well, right? Yeah, sure. But, okay, 
once you select your cork and once you, 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 it's a very good way of closure. But for our range, for this marital range, the, 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 the choice was in this way. Mm. No, I, and I think that even though it's, you know, not, you know, completely chromatic or, you know, uh, you know uh, it, it's, it's, it, there will be oxygen intake here. I, I mm. think that it helps preserve some of the freshness yeah. of the wine. Uh, because you do sure. have uh, somewhat of a reductive nature, yep. you know, in the wine as For a sure. result of the uh, screw cap anyway. Um, that's why, that's why so, so, yeah, I didn't say it, but that's why we do, um, a, after the aging, we do a lot of measure uh, in the bottle to, to check the level of oxygen also. And, um, and this, and the way we, we, we make our wine, we bottle it, uh, with this kind of closure helps a lot to prevent from oxidation of the wine. And that's why when you open a, a Chardonnay, uh, La Chevalier La Roche, um, 17, 18 right now, you are surprised by of the, the, the freshness, the purity. Of course, the wine in, in itself helps a lot. The acidity, pH, the level, level of, of alcohol, um, the, the way we, we age it, with lees, I didn't say it, but we keep lees in the tank. Um, we don't filter it very quickly. I was taking, I was saying that we take our time to do things during aging. So we keep the, the good lees on, on, on the tank. We put them in suspension. Uh, we don't do uh, the wine making, filtering, bottling. We take our time from the aging and to the bottling. And that's why after that, we have to be uh, also perfect in the way we we bottle it and we we close it. Well, um, this has been you know uh, fascinating and a lot of fun. Um, so you know, with uh, some closing thoughts, and you know, as we're uh, having uh, some of the uh, rosé, walk us through the rosé, and you know, tell us of any um, you know latest things that are going on at the winery. Um, latest things, uh, of course, we were talking, uh, we were talking about, uh, organic. Mm. We are talking about, um, uh, additions. We are talking about, uh, making things in a natural way, um, decreasing of sulfur, non-sulfur wines, um, taking care of, um, also environmental things like water results, innovation, uh, Every every vintage, we have like a, a, a little uh, R and D uh, um, uh, team during the wine making the wine making period that are doing some experiments that we we want it not a very small volume. We we do it on one tank, two tanks, but interesting for for us to to improve ourselves uh, in the way we make the wine. Um, so this is in the winery. Uh, on the facility, for instance, also we, we do have solar, uh, solar, um, uh, yeah, solar things panels. for energy, mm -hmm. for energy, because we want like a, uh, and it's in the in the in the way uh, like a, a circular a circular uh, uh, economy. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be uh, self self efficient. You know, it's a global uh, way of thinking. Again. Uh, it's starting. Uh, it started in the vineyard with uh, with organic way, at Vihi, but it's followed again in the winery with uh, with uh, water results, with uh, the fact that the winery is very easy to clean. We have a low, very low consumption of water, so very logical uh, way of um, of making the wine. Um, so, it's a lot in to, to, to walk in, in, in this way. So, no, I, I in I, these I times, love it. And, uh, <laughs> so with the rose, you know, we've got the 2019 in glass, yep. 2019, absolutely phenomenal vintage. So, uh, you know, walk us through the uh, the vintage and the wine. So, vintage, yeah, um, 19 was, um, very good vintage with a very with a good um, sanitation of grapes uh, no no big rain during uh, during um, during uh, summer harvest so very perfect grapes um, very well balanced we were surprised because we had a, a very warm summer but the grapes 
had we had the water during uh, during uh, the the winter before, the grapes uh, managed to keep their acidity. So thanks to thanks to this, we had a very good potential of facility on the wine. No big color, uh, so we had we had to be, of course, precise on the date of harvest. It's not a red, so we had to harvest it maybe ten days before, okay. especially the Syrah, which is can be very dark. Uh, Grenache, it's not the same case, but yeah, very interesting for that. And again, interesting because um, you can feel the structure also on, on, on this rosé, the, the good structure, the good salinity. Uh, and we worked on we worked on it, and so that's why 19 has, has a very good potential. And uh, and um, again, when you drink you, you drink a glass, you can feel at the end um, the, the, the the juiciness, the the good final uh, test that uh, the good bitterness that uh, calls the other glass. So we 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 made we made it in this way. No, it's 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 delightful. Uh, it's you know it it's one of the better rosés at this price point. And when you delve into where those vineyards are located and how they're being taken care of, um, it's it's an eye opener. So thank you so much. Well, um, mm -hmm. any parting words that you want to tell everyone before we? Uh, um, off? Maybe uh, uh, I'm gonna just because you can't be here with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I have I have something just to show you. Um, it's a, like um, a visit, a virtual visit. But I did put uh, like your flag. Oh, thank you. <laughs> because you are with me uh, today <laughs> in the mass. We are <laughs> no, United <thank> States. You <laughs> so. <much. laughs> so once when we when we receive our, our customer, we put the flag of of the country. So today uh, we are receiving uh, uh, you. So I put uh, I put the flag for for you. It was a it was for me a good experience. Uh, not so it's one my, my first uh, tasting on Instagram, but uh, very interesting and uh, uh, to share this moment on with, with you uh, here in this speci specific uh, moment. That are a little bit uh, complicated, <laughs> but no, uh, you did you did a wonderful job. <laughs> you, you you were you were yeah, this 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 moment are yes are are complicated for 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 for, for all the countries. But uh, I think we have to to share good glasses of uh, of wine and uh, that we do. I hope to see you. <laughs> I hope to see you here in uh, in uh, in south of France in. Uh, in a few months. <laughs> I'll be there as quickly as I possibly can. So, um, okay. you know, uh, so we're about to run out of time, but thank you again, uh, Jero, for, uh, for, you know, all of your work and what you do. Um, do check in, uh, follow uh, Jero, uh, you know, uh, in Instagram, you can find him at Jero Blanc. Also follow Marcel oh, La Roche, mm. uh, and, oh, La Roche uh, wines. You know, mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then look out for our future uh, Wilson Daniels IG lives next week. We have Dal Fordo uh, next Friday, and I'll actually be with uh, with with uh, with Domaine La Roche next week. Uh, so we'll be uh, we'll be doing some work with the man that makes great Chablis. All right, hmm. guys. Well, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in, and uh, we'll see you soon. Stay safe out there. See you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs>